So what I'm working on here is I'm just a little project that I've been planning for a while. I want to make myself a nice large display digital clock, six digits. I built the circuit back when I was in high school and I've always wanted to make bigger digits and I did have big digits for a while on it but the LEDs burned out. So this time I'm going to redo the display and I'm making them out of these strips of these are white LEDs and I'm just going to stick them down to a piece of plexiglass then I can create my common anode connections by just bridging wires to them and uh, the nice thing about using plexiglass is I can actually drill holes in here and put the wires through to the back I don't have to have them exposed in the front so once I have these stuck down I'll just use a small drill and I'll drill some small holes through here so that I can bring the wires through to the back and then I can mount the, the, the circuit board behind it and what I plan to do with this thing is I'm going to paint the back of it of the plexiglass black so this will be completely black and then this is going to go in a box and uh, there'll be a glass in front of it a dark black glass in front of it so hopefully when this project is done it'll it'll look good um, this is something I'm not going to complete probably for a while, so I'm going to shoot some video while I'm working on this thing, just as I'm working on it, because uh, I'm in no rush to finish this project. It's, it's been on the it's been in the works now for a long time, as in several years. Every time I go to get started on it, I get sidetracked for something else. So today I'm just laying out the uh, the actual LEDs, lining them up here to form my seven segment display. This is gonna be a six digit clock, so it'll have hours, minutes, and seconds. Ultimately, I'd like to put my neon license plate frame around it. Um, if the size works out, then that's a possibility. So I kinda of have to space the, uh, the digits accordingly so that I'll be able to hopefully hopefully put the uh, neon around the frame but that's basically one digit laid out now we'll work on the next digit I'm going to try and have all six digits evenly spaced and I'll show you what the frame will look like when I uh, get the, I'm going to go get the neon frame that I've already got, place it over here just so I can kind of size it out. So this is my neon frame here. I'm hoping that I can get my six digits, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I should be able to center six digits in here so that I can have my neon frame. So this will light up in red and then the numbers will be white. And I think once this project is complete, this will be a very cool, very cool conversation piece. And that's why I'm mounting it on a piece of plexiglass because, again, I intend to uh, color the back side of this plexiglass, paint it black, and then I can drill some small holes in here and I can use it to directly attach the neon frame. And then I, I, have, two, I have a couple choices. I can either leave it, I can enclose this in a box and put, um, you know, put a black glass in front of it. Or, for that matter, I could just attach my circuit board behind here and have it as an open frame. And um, have all the electronics in behind here where you don't see it. Put my little set switches down here and actually and my power supply and everything for the neon in behind and just have it zap tied to the, uh, the tube to the, to the back. But I think when I get this laid out and wired, it's going to look pretty cool. It'll be a one of a kind. So what I've done is I've traced the outline of my frame so that I can center all my digits so that they'll try to be centered around this. I've, I've, I've outlined this now, but it probably will be shifted up more like this. As long as my width fits in here, as long as my width fits in, then we're okay. Then I can I can center this after the fact. 
but I just want to give myself a reference so that I, I have my width set up for equal spacing. So I'm going to use the width of the backing tape to space my digits out. Now the reason I went with this, this uh, type of stick on uh, LEDs is because they I can run them as, as little as 7 volts and there's basically three diodes in each one in series. So it's just a it's just an easy, quick, economical way to make up a display without really having to go to too much of uh, of an expense and design. I don't have to make up a circuit board. I don't have to make up a pref board. This was just an easy way I figured to um, create my display using a piece of plexiglass and. Um, it's cheap. The The last display I made, and they were blue, was made out of discrete uh, LEDs and there was like about a hundred and I think there was like a hundred and eighty of them, something like that. And they were actually quite costly to, to make. These strips you can buy and they're 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 not that expensive. It's like uh, I think it's like fifteen dollars a meter or something like that. It's they're 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 pretty cheap, and you can cut them every three. So it's it's a it's really quite a reasonable way if you want to make up a, a digital display. Just make them up with segments. There. And there's my second digit. I'm going to continue on on my third and fourth, and my fifth and sixth. And I'm just going to continue on to mount the rest of the digits in here. And then once I've got that done, then I'll, I'll worry about um, wiring up. Um, I think it's a common anode. So in a common anode, all of the positives will be, for each digit, will be connected. All the plus ones will be connected together. And then there'll be a separate wire for, I think it's a common anode that I'm wiring for. I have to go check my schematic. See the common cathode, common anode, my, uh, my drive circuit. But anyway, I can wire it either way common cathode will be all the negatives will be all for each digit so you'd have one negative wire for each digit and all the segments will be wired together so if it's common anode I would wire all the positives together for each digit and each positive would go to its appropriate drive circuit and then all of the segments in other words the negative from this segment would go to the negative of that segment which would go to the negative of the same and you know so all your segments would be connected together and that's why I plan to um, drill holes so that I can bring the wires around back. I don't have to, although I could put the wires around the front. It actually wouldn't hurt. I could stick the wires, just run them around here, and that actually might look kind of neat if I do it that way, if I run the wires around or on the back. But I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to drill holes and take the wires through the back of it to wire it up. Okay, I've got my laid out. Let's grab the uh, strip of neon again and see how it's going to look centered in there. And here's my neon strip. I think you'll agree once this is set up and centered this is going to look fantastic. Six digit white LED with a red glowing neon frame. So as I um, continue on this unit, I'm just now in the process of wiring up the segments. I've already got the, uh, as you can see for the, uh, the common anodes I've got all the positive terminals connected together so each each digit all the positive terminals are connected together and then what I'm doing is I'm just connecting as you can see here I'm connecting the uh, negative terminals accordingly so the negative terminal on this segment is connected to the negative terminal on this segment which is connected to the negative terminal on this segment and so forth all the way across so I'm now starting on the top segment, so I'll connect all the negative terminals across the top here. 
once I've got all of my wires connected I will have seven wires for the cathodes for the seven segments and I will have six red wires for the anodes which will then go to my driving circuit to drive my digits so what I'm using is I'm using this uh, nice it's a silicon coated wire because it's nice you can just peel it off with your thumbnail and here comes my helper my helper is coming back here to observe so once again I'll measure the wire that I need here so I'm just gonna clip the exact amount of wire that I need to connect these two segments together Tin. The copper. This is the first time I've used this uh, silicon uh, insulated wire, and I, I'm quite impressed. This stuff's expensive. Like by comparison, like a like a five foot piece of wire is about three dollars so it's uh, this stuff's relatively expensive for you know for as far as hookup wire goes but it's it's very nice to work with because the silicon insulation resists heat so it doesn't melt and it's relatively soft so you don't have to use any uh, any tools you can just tear it off with your fingernail which is which is nice. I mean, it just it makes for a nice, neat installation. Okay, now I've finished wiring the negative wires for the cathodes, and basically how each one is wired is all of the A segments, all the negative leads are all connected together, and then all the B segments are all connected together, and the C segments, etc., etc and they show up on these seven wires right one two three four five six seven there's our seven there's our seven cathodes now we do the common anodes on each digit all of the positive terminals are already connected together for each digit so all the positives are connected here all the positives are connected here all the positives etc and there'll be one wire run to each segment positive terminal which affects all of the segments on the terminal. Why this is done is this is what's called a multiplex display. And how a multiplex display works is only one digit is driven at a time. So the IC, if you want to form the number two, would heat up that segment, that segment, that segment, that segment, and that segment for negative positive and then it would do them one digit at a time the positive pulse comes along when the digits to make up the two for this number are present on all the wires remember that the, the all the all the cathodes are connected together so the two would be on all the digits but there's no positive power there's no return the positive is dead the positive only gets turned on to the one wire that's being addressed at that time so this digit displays a two the rest of them don't and if the next digit wants to be a zero, it'll form the zero by turning on the segments for the zero. The positive will switch off this line and will switch to the next one, and so on and so forth. And that way you strobe all of your uh, lines together and you display one digit at a time. This is what's called a, a common anode multiplex display. So now I'm just connecting the positive leads these are going to be extended. I'm just I'm just using this nice wire for connecting the displays and I will splice them onto more conventional wire 
when I get off this this board here but I'm just doing this now and I'm keeping the, the wires relatively short just because I don't have a lot of this expensive silicon wire I use this to wire them up just because it's easier to work with than say solid wire so now I'm just going to connect all of my segments together take them off the board and then I can hook up the clock circuit and test it. There's the wiring complete. I'm going to uh, dig up my clock circuit. We'll wire this up and we'll test it and see how it looks. So now it's time to ID the segments. Now that I've wired everything up, I brought the wires through the back. So I'm just IDing the digits. So this is segment number one. So I'm just going to ID the wires as they go through the back so that uh, I know which segment I'm working on so that's that's digit one segment A and I'll just go and connect my positive up to each of the positive leads and that's digit five so I'll ID my wires for my anodes and then I'll do the same thing for the cathodes, which are my segments. This way when I connect them up to the clock driver circuit, I'll get, a, get the time. Six. To identify the next segment. So that's the A segment. I'll just pick the next wire. This next wire here is the uh, G. Because they go A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. So this one is the G. Segment. Next one is A, B, C, D. This is the D segment. Where did I find that one? They're down here. The F segment. And last but not least, should be this one. I think this is the last one. Yep, B. And that's my B segment. So now I've got all the all of the um, all the leads are now identified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to splice them onto color coded wires, and then I can hook them up to the module. And we'll see this thing work. So here's the basic clock module that I built. I did this like 30, probably 35 years ago, I guess. I, I built this, this clock based on an MM5314N. It's a six digit clock circuit. And basically, I when I built it, I put a regular seven segment display on here so what I've done now is I've just extended the seven segment display to the new display that I built for my large display I'm ready to try this out so here it is I got the power adapter here let's plug it in and see if it works looks like it works and There we can set the time. Mm 
Not that went a little too far, but there it is. It works. And uh, I haven't obviously set the neon around there yet. That'll be as the project continues. I'm going to put paint this thing black, paint the back of it black so that the wires can all be hidden. And dress the wires so that the wires are out of the way. But that's a timepiece that you'll be able to read from anywhere in the room. It actually looks pretty good. When I get the, it doesn't show up as well on camera as it probably should. There, if I throw the focus out, you can read it better. There, that's better. If I throw out the focus, it actually shows up better on camera with it defocused. But um, there we go. When I get that mounted in a, a, a box, I got to cut down the, obviously I got to cut down the, the plexiglass. I'm going to make a box for this. I'll do another video when I finish this because I, I don't know exactly when I'm going to finish this thing. This has been a work in progress for quite a while. It, it flickers on the camera, but it doesn't actually flicker looking at it. I can just see it flickering on the camera. That's just the way the uh, shutter works on the camera. But it's, uh, it looks really cool. I mean, it's, it's bright. You can see that from anywhere in the room. And I think when I get the, the red neon frame going around here, and I'm going to put a piece of black glass in front, which will cut down the intensity of it, with the red neon and the white numbers, that's going to be looking real cool. I hope you enjoyed this little quick build of this thing and uh, gives you an insight on how you can use these night emitting diode strips to make digits and, uh, you know, a little project. Okay, we'll uh, catch you in the next one. I'll do another video when I get around to finishing this project.